Hi there, my name is Chris Harris and I'm from AlloryTutors.com and in this video we're going to look at making amines from nitrates. Now you are expected to know what a nitrate is and um, for some boards you also need to know how to make a, uh, a nitrate when it's attached to an aromatic group. So for example, uh, you need to know about how to make nitrobenzene. So the nitrate ion uh, contains NO2 and uh, if you don't know what the uh, mechanism is regarding the making of nitrobenzene, if you just click on the link below, uh, you can have a look at the video um, that I've done on nitrobenzene. Um, but in this video, I'm going to assume that you know what it is, and we're going to take that one step further. So, um, nitrobenzene um, is, um, can be used to make your um, amine, an aromatic amine group, so something like phenylamine. And um, phenylamines are actually really good for uh, making dyes, as you can see over here. So they do actually have a really, really important use. And I'm just going to show you the um, two very quick steps just to show you how to how to make the amine. So we're going to start with the first step. If we take our nitrobenzene, that's this molecule here, um, actually what we do is we actually uh, form a salt intermediate product first. And it's done in two ways. So um, this is the first way. So we've got nitrobenzene, and we're going to make our salt. Now you can see here that um, this is obviously not balanced, so we're going to balance it in terms of a redox equation. Uh, I'm going to explain how these things work as well. Um, for the purposes of the exam, you really don't need to know a lot of information about this. I'm just going to show you just to help me explain uh, what's actually going on in this reaction. Um, but you are expected to know what the reagents are and the conditions that you use. And for this reaction. So we've got NO2 and NH3. Now if we're going to balance this, you can see we've got two oxygens on the left hand side here and we don't have any oxygens over here. So if we're going to balance it in terms of a redox equation, the three things that we can add are water, protons, which are H plus ions, and electrons to make this thing balance. So that's what I'm going to do here first. Now I'm going to start with water first. So you can see here we've got two oxygens on the left. So to balance out our oxygens we add water. H2O, and we need two lots of water to balance out the oxygens on the left and on the right. The next thing we're going to need to do is we need to balance out our uh, protons. Now you can see on this side that we actually have four hydrogens here, five, six, seven hydrogens in total on the right, uh, and we don't actually have, excluding the ones on the uh, benzene ring, uh, we don't actually have any on this group here at all. So on this side, you can see that we need to add seven H plus ions. So I'm going to keep that there. Uh, and then finally, to add electrons to this as well, um, the electrons will have to go onto this side. You can see that overall on this side it's a plus one charge, and overall on this side it's a plus seven charge. Now, to get this side to be equal to this side, we need to add six electrons to the left hand side to make sure this whole thing balances. So you can see that this reaction initially. We need protons and we need electrons. Now, these protons are actually come from our first reagent, which is concentrated hydrochloric acid. So when we take on nitrobenzene, we have HCl, and this provides seven H plus ions to actually get this reaction to go in the first place. Um, but in order for this to work, you also need electrons. Now, our source of electrons comes from the tin, and the tin can vary its oxidation state uh, and supply the electrons in order to form your um, ammonium uh, salt, which is over here. But again, like I say, in the exam, for exam purposes, you're not expected to um, know where these reagents come from, but you might be expected to apply your AS chemistry knowledge of redox uh, equations uh, to actually balance this equation here. So that's why we need the tin and the HCl there. All this is done under reflux as well, so we're heating it gently under a reflux condition. Okay. Once we've made our salt here, uh, then what we're going to do is going to bring it down here. Now, it depends on the halogen that this is used. In this case, this could be Cl- minus that could be on there because we've used HCl. Um, so I'm just going to just quickly add that onto there. And we take this salt here. Uh, once we've made the salt, we then precipitate our, well, we react it with sodium hydroxide. So we take the salt and sodium hydroxide, and then we'll actually form our amine, which uh, would be a precipitate with it being a, a large uh, molecule. So we're going to draw a product here. So we're going to form, so react to our salt with that, we will form our, there you go, that's our phenyl um, 
phenylamine, which is this molecule here, so there's our aromatic amine, and we're also going to produce, you can see we've got a hydrogen spare there and a chlorine. Now the hydrogen from here, because we've only got NH2, so the hydrogen from here will react with the OH to form water, uh, and then you can see that we have a sodium that's left behind and a chlorine, and so that will form sodium chloride. And there is your phenyl amine, and you've made an aromatic amine. And like I say, that these are very good for making um, azo dyes, and um, there will be a video on that as well. So we just check out the playlist, uh, and you can find the video on azo dyes. But in effect, that's what it is. Um, you, like I say, you need to know the reagents that's required for this reaction. You need to know what you react, and just be aware that actually you form a salt first, then you add sodium hydroxide later on to turn it into your phenylamine. Um, but that's it. Hope that helps. Bye.